Hey everyone, Dylan here, P Fish Friends Gun Wire. In today's video, I got a little tips, tricks, and techniques to show you. Uh, this will help you catch more panfish, bigger panfish at Lake Barber, especially. Um, that's where I fish the most, and that's why I use the most of these um, little tips and tricks I have. Um, I'm just gonna go start with basics. Uh, I'm gonna start with a rod. Um, people say, why you spend so much money on rods and stuff like that? Well, I used to be the same way. I used to think, okay, a rod's a rod, you know. Why spend a lot of money on rods? They all do the same thing, right? Well, kind of. I've been, I, I learned the hard way. I was fishing one time, walleye fishing, and I'm ugly stick around, which no, I'm not bashing ugly stick at all. Back, ugly sticks have a time and place like every other rod does. But I was fishing for walleye on the river, and it was a hell of a day. We were slaying walleye left and right. Then all of a sudden, the bite got real light. I was using an ugly stick, and it just wasn't the right conditions for an ugly stick. I could not feel that light bite, and I was missing fish, missing fish left and right. The guy next to me was slaying fish. The guy who boat I was on one was slaying fish. I wasn't. I didn't have the right rod. Perfect example of when a good rod will come in handy um, for something like a light bite like that. So in pan fishing, you know how crappy are just kind of you know, kind of go up to it and just grab it. They don't really run with it or dart off with it. They kind of just go up to it and grab it. That's when you need a real sensitive rod to feel that bite. But then you need something with a good backbone to back it up, you know, to get the hook set, especially in deeper water like I fish. I fish a lot of deep water. You need a good backbone, not some, so whippy, but something with a delicate tip to it. So that's why I like my Denali rods. Use my Denali, the Prime Series. Made especially for panfish. I'm a 5'6", uh, 6'6", six, six, six person. I don't like a really long rod. Um, but I mean, that's really preference. And then the longer rod you get, the more whippy the tip is. I prefer like a 5.6.6.6, six, 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 my favorite rod. And I um, pair with a decent reel. I use Ukamas a lot. Uh, it's always rod I use for like cat fishing and everything really. I use, always use Ukamas. And I use four pound vicious uh, test. And that's my rod and reel and line setup. Like I said, in some cases that doesn't matter. In some cases it really does matter. Um, but not bashing any other rods here, you know. But I use a Denali, a vicious line. And. It works for me. I can feel that delicate bite, but I also have a nice backbone to control the fish and so on. So next thing I'm gonna jump into here is uh, my bait and my jigs, stuff like that. My jigs like that, it all really depends what, how I'm fishing that day or where I'm fishing. So like in the springtime, I'll be using pretty light jigs. I'll be using um, 1 8 ounce jigs. I mean, 1 8 ounce jig, it's, it's a tiny jig. Yeah, it's a real tiny jig. Get here one for you. One eighth ounce jig right there, the tiny jig. I use that because crabby like have eyes on top of their head, and a slow falling bait will catch your eye, and, and they can keep an eye on it. If it's too big, like a one sixteenth ounce or something like this, and you're casting out there, and it gets below them, they're gonna lose sight of it, and they're not gonna care about it anymore. I like light jigs in the springtime when the fish are shallow. I use really light jigs. My one thirty second, probably the biggest I use. I use sixty fourth and eightieth. Other than that. You know, I'm not using it. It's too heavy for me because the crappie are sitting about four feet or less of water when they're spawning in the springtime. And like I fish a lot of feeder creeks too in the springtime, and those crappies are sitting four, six feet of water, if that. So a light jig is a necessary, you know, to fish at deeper water. Now, while I'm fishing, you know, 30, 20 feet of water, that's when I use a 16th ounce jig. That's when you pull the big boys out. I'm gonna start using the 16th ounce jigs, it's like that. Nice 16th ounce jig. I love this jig. I usually pair that on the bottom, and I usually have like a 80th on top above that. I'll show that coming up, but you won't want to miss that how I rig my rod, how my rig rod jigs up. Then, I also, um, I do enjoy throwing crankbaits along the grass beds, especially at Long Run Dam. It's probably my favorite thing to do is throwing some crankbaits. These little crankbaits are killers along the grass beds. When the grass is just really starting to come up in the springtime after they spawn, they're kind of getting bulked up before they move out to their summer holding areas. That uh, crankbait just glides across the top of their grass beds and get hung up every once in a while and crap, it go crazy for it. I catch a lot of decent sized fish on crankbait. They're not only used for bass, they're also used for crappie. But yeah, that's all the jigs I use. I, I do throw some hair jigs, but a lot of my jigs are just plain jigs because I usually tip them with plastics. That's what I'm gonna show you next. So all my, all my jigs come from Bo Bowers jigs. You check them out on Facebook. But also here's my, here's my plastics I use. Now with one eighth ounce jig, you're like thinking, 
what do you put on one of these ounces? It's so tiny, what do you put on it? And, hold on. So a lot of you are thinking like, what do you put on one of these ounces? It's so tiny, what do you put on it? Got it right here for you. These little, I call them, I call them money minnows. <laughs> Contraband makes these. And they're the tiniest little thing. It's hard for me to hold them, it's a little split tail minnow. All fish love these. I call it trout, crappy, white perch, anything on those things. It's a little tiny jig, a little tiny plastic minnow. Fish love it. And then when I pair up on the larger jigs of the 16th ounce jig, I'll use a T-shad from Natural Forge. A little shad color. We know up here these northern lakes are full of shad. That shad color, that shad color is a killer right there. And I also have some other great baits. I use this fat fry a lot. It's a little fat fry. It's also a great bait for like one thirty-second ounce jig. It's a little fat fry. And I have these little waxy worms. Natural color waxy worms. I'm a big natural color person. Only time I really don't use natural colors is a little bit of stained water or um, see like in the springtime when the crab you're spawning, the, the bright color is getting worked up. But other than that, I'm a real natural person. Love natural colors. I, don't, I guess it's a confident thing as well. If you're confident in what you're using, you're gonna catch more fish. 100% uh, stand by that. If you're throwing a bait that you're not confident in, you're not gonna use it right and you're not gonna catch fish. Now all these baits, I put little cotton swabs in them and soak them in scent. And what that does is it scents the whole box. The whole box gets infused with that scent. And your baits don't get real sticky and, and nasty from the scent. But I use cooking bath fish attractants for that. Now, bobbers and hardware I use, I'll show you that. That's another thing that matters, like what kind of bobbers you use. Especially in the early spring when the crappers are sitting shallow, you don't want a giant bobber like this making a hell of a splash next to them. You want something tiny like that. I use these little foam bobbers, super easy to put on and off. You put it, there's a little slit right there. There's a little slit right there, I don't know if you can see or not, it's sun. And you just put that through there, you put the little stopper on there, and you're good to go. When this fish are sitting real shallow, you take that one there and it, it just delicately hits the top of the water and they don't even know. And that, that is a huge game changer. I will catch a lot more fish using a light bobber like that than a guy next to me using a wooden bobber that makes a hell of a splash. The fish know that. The fish see that splash, it spooks them a little bit, they get a little weary. So these little foam bobbers come in handy. This is the guard bobbers. I use these a lot in um, a little bit deeper water. You know, when they start getting like six, 10 feet, I like to use these a lot and they're weighted on the bottom. And why I like these is because they're like shape, shape of a torpedo. It does not take much for these to go underwater. It's just real quick and easy. These round bobbers, the other thing about the surface area is larger, so it takes a lot more for this to go down. These, I can notice any subtle little twitch. A crappy can come up and just grab a hold of that bait, and that bobber just kind of twitches a little bit. That's why I love these cigar bobbers. Make sure that the weighted ones at the bottom, the other ones just kind of sit like this. These weighted ones sit up like this, and you just see that little movement every time a fish grabs that bait. Now, when I'm fishing a lot of open water, I used to run into a problem. My line's getting all twisted up, you know, my bait twisting around, circles going like this, kind of getting all messed up. So one way to fix that is a little barrel swivel. You got a tight little barrel swivel in there, and it makes a hell of a difference. Um, I have hard. I thought it was a line. I thought it was a reel for the longest time, but it was just a simple barrel swivel stop the line twist and my base, my my bait from spinning around in circles. So that's everything I use. Now I'm gonna show you how to apply it, tie it on the line, and stuff like that. We'll start with the barrel swivel. Um, now with the barrel swivel, swivel, I'll keep my rod here, my line here, here my line, and I already cut a small piece off, so maybe like a, a three or four foot section. Like I said, I'm fishing gin, gin clear water. I'm trying to keep this swivel as far away from bait as possible. So I cut off a, a three foot piece of line. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put it through the hook, through the eyelid, I'm just gonna do a simple, I'm not sure what it's not called, I have terrible with knot names. Switch it around in circles a couple times, you know how that is. And you grab that end of the line, and you stick it through that last hole. Okay? You see that, you see that last hole right now? You see it through that last hole? And we're just gonna pull it tight, like that. Okay, I figured that knot's called, it's such a super easy knot, I use it all the time um, for using uh, terminal tackle. all it tastes, looks real nice. And we're gonna do the same thing for a leader line. My leader line, we're just gonna do the opposite end. If you know how I do this, just skip ahead to the next part. Next part will be uh, how to apply the jigs. 
I'm gonna show you how I do a two jig method, which I use a lot, a, a lot. So I just do the same thing here. I'm gonna twist that round circles. All right, and we're just gonna feed it through the last hole again. Pull it tight. Clip the tag in, and there we go. You can clip the tag in a little bit more, but for showing purposes, it doesn't really matter to me. There's my leader. Nice long leader, it keeps the bait away from that swivel. I'm, I'm a big believer in um, turbo tackle scaring fish. I'm not, I'm not big in turbo tackle around fish when trying to fish. All right, so I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna show you my two jig method I use here. I always I like to use two jigs, a small jig up top and a heavier jig on the bottom. Give the fish a variety of baits to use, a variety of baits to eat. Um, some days they want the small jig, but when they're sitting 20 feet of water, it's hard to get a one eighth ounce jig down there. That's when 16th ounce jig comes on hand to get it down there. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let me get a one eighth ounce jig here for you. My two favorite colors are, are straight up silver and green candy. I love green candy and I love silver. Silver is my natural color to go to and green candy is my other one. Not many places will make you one eighth ounce jigs. That's why I always go to Bo Bowers because he makes me everything I need. Um, with that being said, if you're local here in the Hanover area near Lake Marburg, WE Sells does sell all the stuff I, I, I fish with. They sell contraband, they sell like jigs. So, I mean, they sell the terminal tackle. The only thing you don't sell is the rods and they do have four pound tester, which is I always use four pound test. Um, but they got the baits, they got the jigs. So I mean, go there and check it out because it's all I use and you'll find the exact same stuff I use in that store. So you're gonna find how far you want your first jig up on the line. So just pick a spot how far you want to, I usually like, you know, like distance between the two, a decent distance. And you're gonna grab your jig where you want it to be, there's my jig, and you're just gonna double up the line. There's the line doubled up right now, okay? So then you're gonna grab your two fingers and go around once with that jig. Okay, you see that? And you gotta spread your fingers apart and go right through the middle. Okay? So that's what you end with. The jig went through the kind of the middle of the knot. Then you're gonna pinch that with your two fingers and pull it tight. Keep that knot close to the jig as possible, close as possible to that jig. You want a little bit of distance, but not much. Just keep pulling it, hold it with your fingernail, and you end up something like that. It's, I, I use it, it looks, it looks a little better. That, I love that knot to use for a double jig method. There's probably better methods, there's probably better ways of doing it, but it works for me and I slay fish doing it. So I'm gonna stick to it. But yeah, that's all it is. It's pretty simple not to do. That's what it looks like. That's the first jig. You, want the, you always want the smallest jig on top. Because if not, you're gonna have a hell of a mess with it getting twisted up. Because you have the top jig, it's gonna fall faster than the small jig. I learned the hard way. You know, it's trial and error. That's what happens. So then I'm gonna use my 16th ounce jig on the bottom here. And you can match, mix and match color jigs too. You don't need to do silver, 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 green, whatever colors you want to use. Whatever colors you're confident with is the key to success as well. So I'm gonna put this last jig through the bottom again. Piece of plastic covering the whole piece of metal. There we go. All right. Here, jig through the hole. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna double it up like right, that. Okay. Grab it with your hands. Take your two fingers. Go around once. Put it through the middle of your fingers. You want to spread your fingers apart and go through the center of that hole right there. And you're just gonna pull it tight again. You wanna keep it close. Keep that knot close. And there you go. What this also does, if you tie any other knot, if you don't use like a loop knot or anything like that, if you tie it too tight against the eyelid, what happens is, is when it falls, it's gonna look like it's gonna be cockeyed or something like that because it's too tight against the, the um, eyelid. So you get all kind of funky looking jigs, you know, when you 
pull it tight against here. Here it just moves loosely to that knot, that loop. It moves however it wants in the water, it looks super nice. It gives a real nice action to it. So there's a swivel, first jig, last jig. I use like a little more distance in between my two jigs, a jig and a swivel, but for purposes of showing you guys, I just did it real quick. There's the first jig, so this is how it looks in the water. And there's the last jig. These loop knots make the baits look very free and not tied to a line. And I think it creates a nice looking action, looks nice um, free moving action, I would say. The fish don't get suspicious, because like you said, if you tie that knot too, uh, too tight against that eyelid, it just makes it look all kind of funky. But yeah, um, let me show you how to apply the baits. One thing I see a lot of people make mistakes is how you apply your baits to your jigs. Believe it or not, it matters. I see a lot of people have baits like this. Let me show you real quick here. I see people have baits like that. There's your jig, there's your bait. Then I see it the other way. The, the baits are sticking straight up in the air like that. That does not look natural. It does not look like a bait. You want that bait. The best thing to do is put the jig right against the bait and you see where the natural eyelet, uh, natural hook comes out at. So you put it right, comes out right there. Put the hook in, have it come out right there. And you'll have a perfect looking bait every time. See, so you, you want that parallel action. You want to be perfectly parallel with each other. It looks more natural. You don't want it looking funky, creased up, running like that. The fish notice that stuff. I mean, especially the clear lake, like Lake Marburg, when it's clear, the fish can see very well. Um, you need um, to use every tactic you have to make it look natural. But that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for all the love and support. I love talking to everyone. I get messages all the time. I love talking to people, show them how to do it. Um, the bite is really starting to get hot. Give it another week or two of this hot 70 degree weather. Huh, game on. But right now, look for rocks that get hit by a lot of sun. These fish are up in the rocks, sun themselves, getting a nice warm water, starting to get fed up. They, you know, they sat stagnant all winter long, you know, not moving much, barely eating some food. Now they're hungry. They won't get ready for that spawn. They're finding warm water. They're feeding heavy. Get out there, catch the fish. Good luck and thanks again. This video is brought to you by Moses Family Jerky. Take homemade anywhere. Chicken bass fish attractants, just use it. Bow tie jigs, great baits equal big fish. Denali rods, tournament tested, tournament tough. Wu tungsten, fishing is a contact sport. Amphibia eye gear, because earth is mostly water. Bill Foster LLC, natural forage baits, relax, breathe, fish natural. Vicious fishing, get vicious. Contraband baits, only micro baits slab certified and WE sell sporting goods.